This episode of Budget MTG Decks is sponsored by TCG Player, the best place to buy your cards in the US. Welcome to Budget MTG Decks. All the cards you see in our videos are a dollar or less, with exception of the commander cards. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon to be notified when a new video comes out. Hi, welcome to Budget MTG Decks. I'm David. And I'm Jasper. And today we're going to be looking at a fun and effective popper deck you can build without breaking the bank. And today we have a sweet zombie build for you today. And Jasper, what is going to be the strategy of this zombie deck? Yeah, so it's uh, very basic. We're going to swarm the board with some cheap bodies early on. We don't care if they die because they already died once. So, And then we're going to gain some card advantage to some very effective recursion. And then finally, when they're really worn down we're going to burn them out with stuff like gem palm polluter and gray merchant of asphodel yeah and it's also a pretty affordable deck the whole deck comes to uh about 13 bucks with a sideboard a bit over five bucks so together for uh just below 19 dollars you can have this deck and now let's have a look at all the cards grouped by category yeah. so let's take a look at our zombie army First up, we have four copies of Carrion Feeder and four copies of Sultai Emissary. Now, Carrion Feeder is the main beater of the deck. It starts out small, but it can grow very large. Of course, Sultai Emissary, it's uh, relatively small for its mana cost, but it does replace itself, which can be very useful. Yeah, the Carrion Feeder is definitely the heart and soul of this zombie deck because it's so important for us to be able to uh, sacrifice our stuff for free at instant speed. Yeah. The next zombies are Festering Mummy and Shambling Goblin. Both are kind of same. They're cheap, they come in, their bodies, and we can either sack them or they can die in combat, and then we can uh, usually kill something that's bigger than they uh, than they are. And what's yeah. great is that the Festering uh, Mummy, the minus one, minus one, that it does are counters, which means they stay, they persist on the, on the creature that we put it on. Yeah, and then next up we have our finishing zombies. We have three copies of Grey Merchant of Asphodel and uh, four copies of Gem Palm Polluter. A Grey Merchant of Asphodel, it's, uh, of course, it uh, deals, uh, it makes your opponent lose life equal to your devotion to black and you gain that much life. So even on its own, with just the two black mana symbols and an own casting cost, it's a four point life swing. And then Gem Palm Polluter, uh, it's a six mana, four, three, but we're never going to be casting it. We're always going to be cycling it for two black mana to make our opponents lose life equal to the number of zombies we have in play and then uh, draw a card. And of course, the nice thing about cycling is that it's almost impossible to interact with in Pauper. Yeah. They move on to the recursion cards. We've got Ghoul Colors Chant and Ghoul Razor. Ghoul Colors Chant costs only a single black mana, but allows to return two zombie cards back from our graveyard back to the hand. It can also return a, a regular creature if we want to, but usually we're going to be targeting our zombie creatures. Ghoul Razor. It does return a creature, uh, a zombie back at random, but uh, we're going to be casting it. We're going to be playing it. We got a good chance of being able to determine uh, what that's going to be if we play it at the right time. Next up, we have our removal spells. We have three copies of Geth's Verdict, uh, three copies of Nameless Inversion, and two copies of Vicious Offering. Now, Geth's Verdict is the classic edict effect, targets player sacrifice a creature, and they also lose one life, which of course advances our game plan. The instant speed makes it a little more interactive, which can really catch our opponents off guard. Nameless Inversion uh, it gives a creature plus three, minus three until end of turn. Uh, it can kill a lot of stuff. It uh, does have Changeling, so you can get it back with Ghoul Colors Chance. Sadly, not uh, Ghoul Razor, but still it's very nice to be able to recur a piece of removal like that. And then finally, we have co two copies of Fish's Offering, another instant speed removal spell. Uh, it can kill something small early or something big later because we usually have bodies to throw away. Yeah, then we have the uh, draw spells. We got two copies of Sign in Blood for two black mana. Doesn't matter, we're playing mono black anyway. Uh, we're going to be drawing two cards and we'll be gaining, uh, losing two life. However, uh, even though that is a great deal, we're usually going to be playing like that. We are playing kind of a burn strategy. We do want to get people down really low, dealing either combat damage or burning them uh, without combat. And then Sign in Blood is another example that we can actually make our opponent lose two life, which might just be enough to win us the game. And then finally, we have our mana base. We run 20 swamps and two copies of Baron Moor. Of course, Baron Moor uh, taps for black, but it does come into play tapped. Uh, it can be very nice early, or if you draw it late or your mana flooded, then we can always just cycle it for single black mana to replace itself. So it really smooths out our curve. Yeah, that is it for the lands. Let's have a look at the sideboard. First up in our sideboard, we have two copies of Pestilence, four copies of Rancid Earth, and three copies of Shepherd of Rot. Now, Pestilence, of course, is very nice against those big swarmy decks like elves, goblins, that kind of thing. Rancid Earth is really good at punishing greedy mana bases, stuff that, like uh, Urza Lands, uh, Azorius Chancery, that kind of thing. And of course, uh, this threshold can also be relevant because it deals one damage to every creature in each player. So it can always be a bit nice to have a bit extra damage on there. 
And of course, Shepherd of Rod, it does fit into our game plan. You could easily run it main board. But the reason we run it into a sideboard is because it's two-sided, so it's each player loses the life, which of course can be very risky against aggro or burn decks, uh, but against slower control decks, it's really good to bring in. Yeah, then we have Juress, a Crypt Keeper and Gets Verdict. Uh, three copies of Duress is good against the combo strategies, two copies of Griftkeeper are good against the graveyard strategies, and one copy of Gets Verdict against those boggled players. That is it for the sideboard, let's have a look at two example starting hands. Yeah. First up, we have uh, a hand that starts out very low to the ground with the Carrion Feeder and Shambling Goblin. But what's very nice about this hand is that we can get a lot of value out of Gem Pond Polluter early. Maybe even feed our Shambling Goblin to the Carrion Feeder to kill something and then have Ghoul Colors Chan to bring both back. Now, our next uh, hand doesn't have the Carrion Feeder, but it does have a nice curve of uh, Festering Mummy into Sultai Emissary, Nameless Inversion for backup and Silent Blood for extra card draw. So it's a very flexible start. Yeah, now let's have a look at some non-budget upgrades. Jasper, what, uh, which cards could we include in this deck if we want to spend a little bit more money? Well, of course, the most popular Edict effect in Pauper is still Chainus Edict. It uh, is a Sorcery Speed Edict, which is a bit of a downside compared to Gas Verdict. But on the other hand, uh, you can flash it back for 7 mana, which of course can be very relevant late game. And then we also have Choking Sands. Uh, we do run Rancid Earth in the sideboard. Choking Sands, uh, it's a bit more straightforward. It deals two damage to a land's controller. So it's a land removal that uh, progresses our game plan. Yeah. Well, that is it. Thank you very much for watching. Let us know what you think of this deck. I'm David. I'm Jasper. And this was Budget MTG Decks. Find all the cards discussed in this video in the description below. Also, show you're a fan of the channel by rocking this awesome Budget MTG Decks merchandise. This show was made possible by the support of our loyal patrons. Head on over to patreon.com slash budgetmtgdex and donate as little as a dollar per month.